dear colleague, friends, neighbors, comrade, brothers and sisters, whenever you are, wherever you are, I greet you with all the greeting that you like. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good day. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi uh, wabarakatuh. Today I'll be with you uh, discussing the 31st episode of Fatfada 5 to 5. A few weeks ago, before I traveled to, uh, to Kenya, we discussed the first part of uh, the different kinds of families and the needs to establish a psychosocial support unit in social and humanitarian organization. First one, which actually was discussing the different kinds of families, and you can find the link uh, on the Facebook page the link for the Zoom and the link for the part one. Today, we're going to discuss part two, which is how to protect our children, how to protect our children. I thank my colleague uh, Hajar and uh, Aya Zainab for preparing the, uh, the slideshow. Is this not moving? Uh, before I start, what I'm talking about today, which is how to protect our children inside these families, let me talk to you about a handful or a dozen of problems affecting people globally. The Uyghur people in China, in the big concentration camps, and all these problems is happening to them because there's a complete separation between male and female and they take the male to the concentration camp and leave the female and the children alone. This is number one. Number two, the problem facing the Rohingya from Myanmar for the last seven or eight years. Number three, the problem in Kashmir, which is hidden as well, and nobody actually talks about the three problems because of all the relationship between the three countries and other countries as well. Number four, the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo as well, they are facing a lot of problems, a lot of poverty and other things. Number five, the problem of uh, Central African Republic was mass uh, uh, ethnic cleansing of the people actually in this uh, 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 country. Number five, what's still happening to, uh, what's still happening, to the people of Yemen, it's very disgraceful, disgracing to all the warring parties, all the warring parties. As the people of Syria, for the year number 10 or 11 now, uh, the people in Palestine, in Gaza, in every part of Palestine as well. Uh, the people in Eritrea, in, uh, Eritrea, 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 and actually inside Ethiopia, the Tigray and other displaced people, uh, the people in Lebanon, everywhere, sub-Saharan Africa, poverty-stricken area, all these kind of things, all those people with their families having some problem affecting them, which I'm going to talk about all of them nowadays. In Afghanistan, the same, the same as well. In Somalia, the same, same problems. In East Africa, which is South Sudan, North Sudan, Ethiopia, uh, Somalia, Tanzania, and Kenya. There's a famine or drought. There's a drought, dry season. The families in these areas will be affected directly or indirectly with what I'm going to talk about today. Let us start our talk today. Our discussion has reached its end, and now we need to discuss the 12 different kinds of families and the protecting or protective layers to protect them inside the children, inside the families. Let me explain to you what do I mean by protecting layer or protecting circles. The protecting layers could be a father, a mother, two, grandparent, grand, grandfather, grandmother, four, relative, neighbors, friends. Father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, relative, relative uh, neighbors, and friends. 
I consider all these to become protecting, protecting layers to the children of the family. Clear? So when I talk about the 12 different kinds of families, you understand that each component of this family has a protective layer. Each component of this family has a protective layer. Family number one, called the stable and most cohesive family. If you are with me on the Zoom, you can see all the slideshow, or otherwise, I can send it to you later on. Stable and most cohesive family in a stable society, that family have got the two generations of the grandparents, generation A, generation B, the senior grandparents from the father and the mother, and the junior grandparents from the father and mother. Each one of them, each grandparent's generation will constitute 16 layers or circles of protection to the children. I'll explain it again. Grandfather, grandmother of the mother's side, Grandfather, grandmother of the father's side, that's four. Then the relatives, their neighbors, and their uh, friends. Multiply by four, that's 16. The grandparents from both sides of the mother and the father with their friends, relatives, and uh, uh, neighbors, each, gun, each group of grandparents will constitute 16 layers or 16 circles of protection. So if I've got the two generations of the grandparents are living, you've got 32 layers of protective mechanisms to protect the children inside the family. 32 layers, 16 from generation A and 16 from generation B. If I've got the two generations of the grandparents, and all of them from the from the father's side and from the mother's side. Okay. Mathematically, you have to calculate it, and it is right because I have done it and thought about it too too much. Then the two parents, the father have got his relatives, his friends, his colleague, plus him as four. But four to the father, four to the mother plus 32, 40 protective layers if we have the two generations of the grandparents living with us. 40 protective or protecting layers. This is when the young people, the young men like you, marry early within the law of the country. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, he might catch the generation A, the generation B of the grandparents, which each one of them constitutes 16 layers of 16 protecting layers. Okay, 16 protecting layers for each generation, plus eight for the two parents, that is 40 protecting layers. 40 protecting. You know why I'm telling you this? Once upon a time in the 50s, in 57 or 58, I was seven or seven and a half years. I decided when I was in Cairo to go to see Mother India movie. And the ticket was either one pence, one pence, one pence, or two pence. And when you go to the third class, as I always go to the third class, you can keep watching the movie uh, continuously, two times, three times, four times. All right? So I was there enjoying uh, watching the movie of the Mother India as well as trying to justify spending one or two pence at that time. Then I slept. Then the guard man after midnight came and woke me up, tell me, boy, hi, hi, yeah, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. I said, where to go? I said, go home, Halas, finished, everything is done. I went out, there was no lighting in Cairo at that time, especially in the area where the cinema was. I was shattered, don't know where to go. Right, left or center. I don't know where to go. I was lost at the age of seven or seven and a half or eight years at that time in Halmeya, between uh, Shari Muhammad Ali and uh, the, uh, the, the police station of Darb uh, So in the middle of the night, so of course my family was all over the place. 
Where is the gun? Where is the gun? Where is the gun? All the family are going searching in hospitals, in streets, a police station to try to find me. Then I saw a, 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 a sheikh, sheikh. He came and told me, Sonny, uh, what are you doing now? Because after midnight, at that time in the 50s, after midnight, it's too late for a young boy at my age to be there. I told him, I don't know where, 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 where my house is. He says, what's your name? I said, my name is so and so and so and so. Oh, I said, yes, you are the son of Sheikh Abdul Jawad al -Ban. I said, yes, do you know him? Yes, I know him. He took me by the hand and they delivered me to my family at that time. This is the friends, the friends, the neighbors, the relatives of the parent, of the grandparent, of the mother, of the father. Very effective protective methods or measure to protect our children. This is uh, family number one. Stable and most cohesive family. I'm trying to justify for the people who are starting with me today to advocate for having a psychosocial support unit at each social and humanitarian organization. This is why I'm discussing it in this part two and part three will be inshallah next three, next week. The second, the second kind of family is a stable family in a stable society, but have got one generation, not the two generations of the grandparents. So we lost the senior generation of the grandparents, so we have the junior generation of the grandparents and the two parents. That means that we have 16 layers, 16 protective layers provided by the two parents from each, from the father and from the mother. 16 and eight layers from father and mother, 24 layers. I say it again for the who came late. A layer means protection by the father is a layer, mother is a layer, neighbor of the father or the mother is a layer, friends of the father or the mother is a layer, relatives of the father or the mother are there. This happened also to the grandparents. So on this one, we have got 24 layers because the grandparents are still there, okay? Family number three, which we lost the two grandparent generation. Generations of the two grandparents, generation A and B, of, of, of father and of mother. So be only left with whom? With the father, like myself, and the mother, like some of you. Welcome, uh, Sister Shaheen, Wilson, Brother Nisf Nahas, and the other people who joined before. We'll be only having eight protective layers. The mother is one layer, her relatives is one layer, her friends is one layer, her uh, uh, neighbors one layer, as four. The father is one layer, relatives, his relatives one layer, uh, his, his friends one layer, and his neighbor is one layer, so eight. So in family three, we have got eight protecting layers. Eight protecting layers. Occasionally, some of friends and neighbors might be, maybe you might find one grandparent still alive, maybe a nine or 10, but eight. This is family number three. Family number four is like myself. And anyone immigrated or migrated from where they were in Asia or in Africa to come to Europe, America, Canada, and other places. Who will be there with the children? The two parents only. But the relatives will not be there. There will be the two parents, plus the neighbors, the neighbors, and the friends. If the father is one layer, his neighbors and his friends, another two layers, are three, and the mother have three. So in this family, we'll be having only three, six protective layers, or six, uh, protecting uh, circles, not eight like it was uh, with the relatives in uh, at home. But in certain areas, especially with the Asian, big Asian community, you might find some of the relatives there. So it might go out 
from six to seven or eight, but generally six protective layers or six protecting layers to the child. All right. Number five, the troubled families. Two troubled families to start with. The family of the divorcee. The second is the family of the orphans or the widows. The family of the divorcee, most of the time, the children will be surrounded by friends and neighbors. Of whom of the caring parent. And sometimes the caring parent might eventually get married might eventually get married. And we will find that the numbers of the protecting layers to the children are four. Maybe if the protecting layer was a mother, maybe a mother, neighbors, friends, and relatives of the mother. OK? Occasionally, if some relative from the father's side might give one extra layer, a grandparent or another relative from the other side. Not go to six, sometimes go to eight. But with the divorced wife or the divorced husband, we'll find four layers with him to protect his own children. Okay? This is the divorcee. Number six, the troubled family which belongs to the orphans and the widows. In our understanding, the orphan becomes an orphan when he or she loses her, her father. So the children, which are orphans, will be with the mother. Will be with the mother. Children will be surrounded by relatives, friends, neighbors of the mother. And sometimes communication with the dead father's family. Sometimes the family will be lost or seized. We will find that the numbers of the protecting layers surrounding the family as well, the children are four. The mother, her relatives, her friends, her neighbors. And sometimes they lose contact with the father's uh, family. But if the two parents are dead, if the two parents are dead and the children are living with relatives, so the protecting layers will be three, relatives, friends, and neighbors, not four or five or six, not four or five or six. All right, so it goes from 40, now we are three. Number seven, the displaced family inside the country due to natural disasters, or due to conflict, armed conflict. Okay? In this displacement, we might be going from a district to another district, or from a town to another town, or from a city to another city. Okay? The two parents, or one of them only, could be lost in the mass or the influx of the movement of people. Okay, some relatives and friends and neighbors could be found because they can go together. As we can see now in Syria or in Yemen or in Iraq at the time of Mosul. Okay. Some relatives and friends could be there in the neighborhood. But many, many, many strangers will come from different townships, different cities, different districts and be surrounding the family. New people, yes, they are having the same culture, the same language, the same nationality, could be the same religion, could be the same value, but they are stranger. Not like the good old days before displacement. The social fabric surrounding this family will be unpredictable. The social fabric surrounding this family will be unpredictable. Sometimes we will find the protecting layers of this family could be five or eight, or even five to eight. If the two parents are there, some of the relatives and friends and neighbors as five. Sometimes we might find one of the grandparents there as well. From five to eight layers or circles. And in case 
of the presence of one parent only, it will go down to four. It will go down to four. But if we lose the two parents in this mass influx of displacement, it might go down to three. Three, three, three. From 40 to three. Okay, in displacement. Number eight, families of refugees, communities. Refugee moves from his country or her country into another country. The problem with this is that actually the Syrian living in Lebanon, the Syrian living in uh, Turkey, the Syrian living in Jordan. Very clear, and I've seen this all of, or maybe uh, African moved from A to B to C to D, and you can see that the mass influxes of refugees like the, the, the DAP camp in, 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 in Kenya, it's from Somalia, moved to Kenya more than 30 years ago. Okay, so they moved to another country. The problem with the other country is, could be different culture, different language, different religion, different history, different values. Plus a lot of strangers from their own country coming with them. Both parents or even one parent of them with the children. Yani could be we might find in these refugees camps in a different country, the two parents with the children or one parent. Rarely we find relatives, friends, and neighbors with them. Would we'll be surrounded by strangers. All the children or some of them could be lost. You know, in the mass influx of refugees movement from A to B, like you see now, refugees going from Turkey to Europe. Some die in the middle of the journey. All children or some of them will be dying or separated from the parents. Or from the family. All this kind of fragmentation of the family will happen. Either this of one parent, Death of post parents, separation of one parent, separation of post parents, separation of some children and others. The protecting layers or circles for the children might not be present at all because of this, this, this actually loss, loss of the two parents and some other children. Most probably, they will have no relatives. Most probably, they have no relatives, friends or uh, neighbors. And the protecting layers in the refugees camp could go from zero to two, if we have the two parents. From zero, if the parents not with the children, to two, they can imagine how young children will be feeling when they are in a refugees camp or having no parents with them, or having one mother or having half of the children, and they don't know the rest of their brothers and sisters. The protecting layers of circles will be there, surrounded by home, strangers, 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 strangers. So the refugees, in the refugees camp, if we lose one parent or both parents, the protecting layers will go down to one or two or zero. Number nine, street children. Street children on a stable or unstable society. In the street children, they might have both parents, but both parents are unable and not capable to look after them for many reasons. They might be sending them outside the flat or the room or the house to beg or to find manual work or to do some stupid things. That's the parents, and both of them are there. Maybe it could be one parent that's there. Maybe the children will be on the street having no parents. Okay? The children are always living with one or both parents and could be living on their own, which is very important, in the streets with the strangers, bad guys, and criminals. 
But if they are living with one or both parents who do not take care of them, they might have one or two protecting layers. One or two protecting layers. But in the absence of the two parents will be zero. No protecting layers. You remember Oliver Twist, Oliver Reed, and the good, it's a beautiful movie, but it's a very sad movie. Scrooge, remember Scrooge? Those, these big movies which have been watching them during Christmas and the great actor uh, Oliver Reed and not on Scrooge in, uh, in Oliver Twist and how children were lost. This was describing the situation of the street children in the 30s and 40s and 20s in the middle of UK, in the middle of Europe. A lot of movies also where I came from in Egypt came out in the 50s. Talk about street children and how they are being treated very badly by those scum. Or those street children will be picked up by those bad guys will have no protecting or protective layers. This is the family of the street children. Number 10, the one parent family, and this is very common in the West, single parent, single mother. We have the caring mother, or what we could call her, the single mother will be the only one responsible for the children. Let me take you some to the 70s when I came here. I was in Abrest with, and they mentioned this story many times. I was in Abrest with looking at the sea. I was not, I was, did not pass my exam at that time. And next to me, in the same road, young boy, I was 17, 16, 19, something like this, with a younger girl with a push chair with a baby. And I was very busy looking at the sea, beautiful at that time. This was 1978. Most of you could not have been born at that time. And all of a sudden, I found that the girl is screaming crying, shouting. I looked, I did not find the boy, the boy ran away. Ran away, I mean it, ran away. Because he did not want to become responsible for the child or for the girl. And this is the problem of having this kind of relationship outside the family boundary and the only one who will carry the heavy burden of the family is the young girl at that time. The caring mother inside the, this family will be the sole responsible for looking after all the children who might be from one or two or three different boyfriends, or as we call them, common law husband. And this was one of my colleague who was a gynecologist when he used to examine uh, the young girls at the time. They have to remember who was, when they were asking them about who was your uh, partner at the time, they have to remember which boyfriend they live with at the time. But the mother's boyfriend or common law husband could be a source of problems. And we have seen it recently when this young baby has been killed by the boyfriend and others or sexually harassed by them, beaten, abused, tortured, or sexually abused as well. Even sometimes the mother can abuse the child of her boyfriend. Even the mother might have more than one child from different boyfriends. And here, in this family, uh, the children will be uh, living with the mother and will be protected by the mother as one layer, her friends in the neighborhood and neighbors. Could be one, two or three layers in the single parent family. Could be one layer, two layers or three layers. It depends on how the neighborhood or the friends will be welcoming the child. This is the single parent family. 
The family of the children of unknown origin, of no parentage, yani found in the street in front of a church, in front of a mosque, uh, left in front of the hospital, and so on. The mother in this situation will be the female alternative mother because they'll be taken to a care home. In the care home, will be having an alternative mother. Alternative mother. So when the child will be picked up from the street or from in front of a church, in front of a mosque, the authority will take it to this, this uh, care homes. And the, rea the mother inside the care home will be the male or the female carers. Let me tell you my opinion about the carers. I will never, ever allow a male carer to look after the children. Never. I've seen recently, last week, this individual who raped the 92 or 91 or 90 years old dementia woman in the middle of UK. Can't believe it. Nobody can imagine that such an individual will have the, I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. 90 year old woman and you rape her. Ah, oh, that's for me. Never allow a male carer to look after the children. If you want to use them, use them in administrative work, security work, or transportation, but never logistics, but never ever let them to communicate with women, old women or even old men, or even children. I'm a male, but I'm not going to allow it to happen. And this is my statement. If you don't like me, you can meet me around. The female alternative mother and the other female support staff will be like their mothers and relatives. And if I'm, if I'm going to be the alternative mother, and the staff will be like relatives, like friends and others. But the child there in this care home might have two or three protective layers or one. Or one. One or two or three. There's a question here. You might say that the care home is a shelter, very good shelter for the child. I said yes and no. Yes, because it's, it, it protects the children from the wildlife outside. But no, because it led the child to grow in a very artificial atmosphere. So his resistance to the outside world will be weaker. Will be weaker. But anyway, this is a solution. <sighs> Number 12, the family of concentration camps, as I mentioned at the very beginning, in Yugor and in Bosnia before. Presence, unfortunately, is happening nowadays to male and female and in, in even countries in the Middle East. Detention center happening there. Hostages forcibly disappeared people or disappearing people victorious armies entering cities and towns as, as old as history the victorious army when they enter a township the easiest thing to do is to capture young girls and women and stuff eventually the prime victims of this in this group would be women will be randomly or systematically raped. 
and they're having illegitimate children, unfortunately. Let us talk about group number A, families of concentration camps, ethnic cleansing in Bosnia, and the victorious armies entering major cities in Berlin. We've observed during the ethnic cleansing, 1992-1995, what happened in Bosnia. Concentration camps, young girls systematically raped by soldiers who were taking tablets to let them to manage to make sex five or six or seven times a day. And they were actually kept in the concentration camp for about five or six months. Then she became pregnant and then they released her. Unfortunately. This is in the case of Bosnia, organized by the government. In case of Bosnia, tens of thousands of young women and girls were systematically raped and became pregnant. The young women were forced to stay in the concentration camp for about five months or more. And this is what happened in Bosnia between 92 and 95. In the case of Berlin, after the Second World War, hundreds of thousands of young women and girls have been raped by the invading armies. Even one of the articles I read, it said that about two million or more women in Germany were trying to commit suicide to find a way to kill themselves because they knew what their fate will be. And hundreds of thousands of children were born because of this filthy, ugly behavior of invading, conquering soldiers. What will happen? What will happen to the young mothers? In both cases, the broken young mothers who were already living in emotional and social isolation far away from their own society. Because, yeah, if you can imagine, you remember the story of Lady Mary, peace be upon her. When the angel, and it was an angel from God, but she still felt shame of having a baby boy without having a husband. And even her community said, what's wrong with you? The daughter of Imran, the relative of Harun and Musa and others. What is this? Your mother was not a prostitute, not you. Where do you bring him from? She couldn't be able to talk. This was the lady, Lady Mary, who was trying to explain to the public the miracle of the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him. The young mothers and their children would be isolating themselves from relatives, friends, and neighbors because it will be in a shameful situation. <coughs> the number of protecting layers or circle of this family will be two or maximum and rarely three. Maybe the mother will be one layer, be one of the relatives or neighbors or friends will be with her. Or parent, if it is. Rarely three, protecting layer. B, the families of female prisoners. The teenage is happening now. There's nothing called international human rights. Though all this had gone with the wind, evaporated. Hostages, forcibly displaced people. When such young women, or even men, or boys in detention camps, they'll become victims of multiple rape, physical and psychological torture. Eventually, young women will become pregnant and be delivering legitimate babies. Some of these practices are having, are having them in states governed by brutal, autocratic, militarized, securitized government departments. And I mean what I say, and you know what I'm talking about. But since we're not talking about politics, 
not want to hurt anybody, we don't mention names. In case of the legitimate children, the protective layers could vary between one to three, depending upon the relatives, will they accept her or not? Friends, will they accept her or not? Neighbors will accept her or not? In the case of mental and physical torture to men and women, parents, they could become in, incompetent and in, or incapacitated. And the numbers of the protecting layers or circles will be also vary from one to three, whether it is pregnant young girl or raped young boy and man. Khalas, you destroy them. And this is done systematically by these regimes, the autocratic dictatorship, securitized, militarized regimes in certain countries. Some of the parents will accept it, some of not, will not accept it. These are the 12 different kinds of families and how we protect our children from having 40 layers to having zero layers. With this and with what we are living, with the world that we are seeing and watching, the mass displacement and refugees movement and this unjust regimes globally, we must, we must think seriously of creating psychosocial support unit, department, or office run by whom? Not by people like myself, but by psychiatrists, and social workers to, to put their input in all the projects that the organization are planning to implement. Not to get an officer to talk about a speciality which he or she have no knowledge of it. This is my appeal to all of you. The 12 different kinds of families that live inside different societies yeah, we discussed all this. Also, I've discussed the different layers or la circles inside these families. Protecting them, it goes from 40 to zero, as I mentioned, 40 to zero. We have realized from this discussion that nine out of the 12 families need psychosocial support. 75% of the families need psychosocial support. Even the other three, which is 25%, might need psychosocial support if they are exposed to trauma or other challenges. Don't spend only your money on food and drink. I remember a story in the good old days during the war, the Korean War in the 50s, the big camp, refugees camp or displacement camp, I can't remember exactly, a young girl, no injury, no arms broken, nothing, 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 nothing. She came to the doctor, asking to be seen by the doctor, but the doctor was actually had a long queue of, of, of people with heart attack, with diabetes, with, uh, chest problem, with broken legs, with others. He ignored him day one, two, three, for a week. Then they found after one week that this girl committed suicide. Committed suicide. Took her life. Why? Because she was raped. And she wanted somebody to counsel her. And the doctor could not be able to discover because there is nothing physically on her that he will give a priority to the examine her on some elderly, on someone with broken arm or leg. Okay? This proves, and I'm challenging all the social 
and humanitarian organization. If they come and tell me that all these families are not in our uh, groups that we suppose and that we claim that we are helping, they are and more. There could be more than 12 families, kind of families, could be 20 or 30, it depends on your classification. It became a compelling duty upon the in charge of this organization to realize the enormity of the complexities of the social infrastructure of their surrounding societies. Don't live in ghettos. Don't live in cocoon. Don't live in Ivory Coast, as an Ivory Tower. Ivory Coast is a country. I don't know why I keep saying Ivory Coast. It became a compelling duty upon the in charge of these organizations to realize the, the enormity of the complexities of the social infrastructure of their surrounding societies. To make what? To make their organizations in line with these social complexities. How? Intellectually, socially, professionally, structurally, and occupationally to deal with these different and complicated problems. Let me say it again, because this is the crunch of the month. It became a compelling duty upon the in charge of these organizations to realize the enormity of the complexity of the social infrastructure of the surrounding societies, to make their organizations in line with these social complexities intellectually, socially, professionally, structurally, occupationally, to deal with these different and complicated problems. Needless to say that the more complicated the societies become, the organization should understand and absorb their problems. Through what? Through organizing the following. We are organizations who do not believe in research, in analysis, in training, in capacity building. Through the following, needless to say that the more complicated the societies become, the more the organization will have to understand and absorb these problems. Through the following, number one, make field studies to understand the root causes of these problems. Make statistical and analytical research. Research. We don't spend money on research or any studies because they do not bring money. Statistical and analytical research studies to discover the real size and the spread of these problems and the finding solution for each of these problems. Number three, creating new specialism or roles of newly for newly emerging departments or unit for psychosocial support inside this organization, not only for psychosocial support, for other needs that the community needs. Creating new special new, new specialism or roles for newly emerging departments or units inside this organization. Number four find social solution for this problem. It is not media. It is backbreaking and heartbreaking and long-term investment to try to sort all these problems out. And then, this is my appeal to you. Please, please, we urge this organization to come out of their cocoon, ghettos, and comfort zones, from the barricaded areas, from being calciferous, ossified, or fossiliferous. Once you be there, you be like the fossil, calcified. Come out. Come out. See the community. Come out. See everyone who gave you the money 
to serve the people. You are the servant. By the way, I call them right holders, not beneficiary anymore. You are the beneficiary. You are the beneficiary, not them. We we'll give you the money to serve. You are a servant. And they are the rights holders. And then we urge this organization to come out of the cocoon, ghettos, and comfort zones, barricaded, calciferous, ossified, and fossiliferous, isolating themselves and the organization from the real lives of the different developing and the emerging societies surrounding them. You are there in the organization not to separate yourself from the society, but to serve the society. And this, inshallah, what we're going to discuss next week. Same day, six o'clock, Friday, which is the psychosocial unit. How can we make it? So first part was the different kind of 12 uh, families. Second today, which actually the protecting the layers inside each family next week, why should we have psychosocial support unit in our organization? I thank you very much for being patient with me. God bless you, uh, especially the people who have been uh, with me the whole time. And may Allah bless you and Jum'a Mubarakah to all of you. Whether you are Muslims or non-Muslims, Jum'a Mubarakah is for everybody. We pray for everybody. We pray for anybody and everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.